I'll just a quick one word answer. Would there be any value in creating a black party specifically for the UK? No. No. I know I now want to follow up. No. I mean I no no. <laughs> No, I'm not. Uh, no, because it, 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 that's just, that would be as my mum would say, damn stupidness. <laughs> One, because uh, we, we have a first past the post system that in the end is tough on the Greens and the Lib Dems, let alone uh, some newbie come along. Uh, look what happened when Chukaramuna... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's get real here. Wow. Let's get. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's self-evident, right? <laughs> Where you got my self? Today's coach show asks the important question. How do we, as African Caribbean people, collectively hold to account those who betray our interests from our own community? And in today's show, we've got Rap Raven investigating the hard questions. Because it's not as simple as characters like Kemi Badenoch, Sean Bailey, and Tony Saul, who is very easy to wag our fingers at. But also looking at the left, where we traditionally vote, like the Labour Party, so this weekend, there was an interview with David Lammy asking him if we needed African Caribbean specific representation politically, to which he laughed and said is what his mother called stupidness. And then he brought up the example of Chuka. Now, here is a picture in the corner of Chuka and his party. What those in position do is conflate what we don't know and use our ignorance against us. Can you see any African Caribbeans in the picture outside of Chukwu? This is the fraud being perpetrated on our community by politicians who are handcuffed by party policy and can't specifically help African Caribbeans. Let's investigate. Welcome Code Show family. Good afternoon. This is the Code Show where we invite you to agree, adopt and apply code that benefits African Caribbeans. Today our guest is Rap Raven, who's the CEO of Mount Melanin, which is a black betterment collective. Mount Melanin encourage us to pool our economics, to share ideas, most effective practices. They work across the property industry, he runs a show on a Friday night called The Black Betterment Show that encourages us to better collaborate, but more importantly, act on. Welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me, brother. Thank you for inviting me. How's it going? So Can you hear me? Hey. You have perfectly coined a term that I love because I think it just demonstrate so well where we are. Explain to us in over the reasonings you've had, what is being collectively inadequate? Right. So here's what it is, right? Um, you know, we have to start from we have to start from the beginning. We understand that the people of African Caribbean descent we find ourselves in, in England or <laughs> pretty much all over the world to be fair, right? Um has obviously had a very, very um, challenging uh, history. And because of that history, um, you know, we find ourselves in many, many uh, in situations that doesn't lead, you know, to a, to, to, to a great uh, way of existing, of coexisting, right? So normally when a people group go through this, uh, their default mind is to pull their resource together to actually, you know, work on solutions to find out what is it that, that's happening that finds ourselves either consistent at the bottom or, you know, in a situation that doesn't work in our best interest. Unfortunately, it seems that some kind of campaign or uh, uh, some kind of way of processing information seems to be over uh, the people from African Caribbean backgrounds when it comes to working together uh, to, to work on solutions. And because of that, uh, this is why I'm identifying as collectively inadequate. We, we, we don't have the ability to actually um, work together. So that, that for me now is the primary 
So the primary is like, how do we get people together? You know, how, how do we get people to work as a group, as a whole? You know, uh, working towards betterment, and um, that that's how I that's why I coined that phrase, bro. That it's, it's you know, and it seems to correlate with a lot of the the information and stuff that we see in the media or in our private lives. Thank you, sir. So, when we talk about being collectively inadequate, we have characters in our community, and what I love about the, co your, the show that you created on the Friday for Black Betterment is that you've so effectively lined out the characters, the assets and the liabilities to our community. Sometimes mm. we are unintentional liabilities, but once yeah. we're made aware, we mm. then become intentional liabilities. So yeah. today we're really going to focus on the political so-called representation because we are at an election week. Um, elections are taking place on Thursday. Mm. We have our own party. We have our own candidates that are clearly working within our interests. Mm. And what I'd like to examine today is some of the, some of the myth that we actually have African Caribbean representation in parliament. Now, when you look at a character like Kemi Badenoch, who I'm going to show a video of in 30 seconds, Mm -hmm. I just want to frame her to show someone who acts outside of our interests. And yeah. when we look at Kemi, Kemi is the face of delivering racist policy. But it's not only that she's delivering racist policy, she's supposed to be the equalities minister. Mm. So it adds insult to industry that not only is she the policy, the equalities minister, but she's the one who is the mouthpiece for benign neglect. Now, a policy right. of benign neglect is one that recognizes a problem and says, we're not going to apply policy to it. We're not going to apply any resources to it. It will fix itself. Mm. Now, that only happens with African Caribbeans. So I'm just going to line up somebody that I recognize as a clear liability to our community. Mm. Definitely that is betraying our interests. Mm. And then it would be great if you would speak a little bit about how you've come to that point of code. The government briefed a clear message well in advance of this report landing. Why did the government do that? Mr Deputy Speaker, I think it is disgusting that a member of this House will stand up and accuse people of being racial gatekeepers. This is the same nonsense we have heard time and time again, calling people Uncle Toms, calling people house Negroes and house slaves, and calling them racial gatekeepers. The fact that she is able to stand here and use that phrase without any shame whatsoever just shows how far the Labour Party has fallen. We in this House have a responsibility to speak about this issue with nuance. I will answer the question, but we in this House have a responsibility to speak about this issue with nuance and responsibility. And the way that she has carried out the debate is disgraceful. And in fact, she is one of the many people who continues to stoke division in this country. And I'm very, very sad to hear her remarks. The fact of the matter is that this report was written by professionals and experts who have a different view than she does. If she has a view that is not acknowledged by others, she should engage in a sensible debate and not call them racial gatekeepers. Point of order. Point of order. The Minister has a responsibility to Parliament to answer the question. The Minister has given a statement. The Minister is supposed to answer the question. The Minister has not answered this question. Mr. Continuation of the, the question. I see your honourable. Hmm. What hmm. an excellent tactic. Hmm. Don't answer the question. No. Just go into hyperbole, confuse everybody with your disgust at being called a racial gatekeeper. Mm. The last that I knew, people who suffer racism and racial gatekeepers, um, to call people out on their nonsense in what they do wasn't an offence. Yeah. What are your views on that? Well, here, here, let me just make one thing clear, right? And this is just, you know, just this gap for people viewing. Why, why I talk about my show is um, things happening at the back of the mind and the front of the mind, right? So living in the system we have now and how the education works, some people can actually do things against African and Caribbean um, betterment without knowing it. It can actually be it's programmed so hard in the back of their head that when they see certain kind of trigger points, they work in a way that works in the interest that isn't within 
directed themselves, right? And some people have actually been uh, put in positions to do that. Uh, sometimes it's hard to discern which is which, um, but the assumption would be the higher you get up in the totem pole, the more likely that you are probably, you know, uh, complicit, you, you know, but I can't say because without being that, you know, I'm on cold, I can't say someone is, someone isn't. But what I can say is I'm always going to gravitate towards someone who works within the best interests of African and Caribbean people collectively, right? And if you don't practice that, then, um, you know, we, a, a, a form of either ignoring and shunning might happen, or if you're someone who we suspect is actually doing it deliberately, then, um, yeah, that's when we'll have to call you out and we'll have to do things like political boycotting and these kinds of stuff. Uh, I think, you know, this is, um, I think it, it, at this point now, it's because of the, the, the collective of the inadequacies of, of African Caribbean people when it comes to working for particular uh, agendas, because it, it's so defragmented at the, at the moment, it's easy to practice benign neglect, right? Because there's no repercussion, right? So the idea is to influence the influencers and try to uh, get everyone on the same page so that, you know, we can actually, like, boycott or ignore or shun and have people actually you know come towards us as a collective um and, and actually answer the questions we asked without doing the whole you know red herring and this kind of stuff whatever you know that kind of stuff yeah and you hit the nail on the head about there being no repercussions whatsoever mm. we have caribbeans have a saying dance a yard before you dance abroad so mm. there's a very specific reason that we are focusing on the MPs that are misrepresenting us, especially mm. for a policy of benign neglect, because mm. we know just how harmful that is to our socioeconomic progress. Very. It mm. stunts our social and economic mobility capabilities mm. because a policy of benign neglect that ignores all of our problems. And when you think about us being a three million population, even if we were a million hip taxpayers, that is a very, that's a huge contribution to the UK GDP. Now, if we're not realizing any of the benefits from that taxation, then we aren't being represented by who those who we vote in. So the We Matter campaign is one that I briefly touched on yesterday, and I'll just go over the points. So what is the We Matter campaign? The We Matter campaign is a video campaign with all of our influencers where we will actually have a target. It could be Kemi Badenoch, who is misrepresenting us and not fit for purpose for the role that she's in because she's carrying water for racist policy based on her personal ambitions. But mm. her role is actually to effectively create more structural inclusion for and on behalf of us. So what is the We Matter campaign? It's a video campaign with influencers, broadcasters and celebrities aimed at putting those people in their place and holding them accountable. Then what we do is we call the public to do exactly the same. To copy the text of a script that we put out to record your own videos, to then follow the schedule so that we upload those videos day, date, and hour, and then upload them to all social media. This is how collectively we hold them to account. Mm. So when you think about a process which is very formal, very mm. structured, and actually calls all of us to action with a very simple and clear call to action. Our community has never been that effectively organized. So mm. I will tell you straight away that this man right here at Braven is one of those who I take directive from on code. I'm an avid follower and have been for at least four years. But because he's annotized it down to such a simple, quantifiable set of actions, not only to better ourselves personally, but one of my, really my purpose now is to return the value of currency to an African life. Now, if we don't have a value mm. proposition for our own lives, nobody else will. And that's evident. So the code that Rap Raven's been laying out 
enables us to move in this direction. So what I would like to ask you now is how do you clearly define an asset? And can you break down those different asset types? You, I've, I've heard you do it on a Friday where there are those who positively impact and the different ways in which they do. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, uh, sometimes it becomes very challenging to, you know, to uh, hold up a, a fake persona for long, long lasting time. Like uh, you have to like maybe like professional wrestlers had to do this in the past and stuff. Right. But generally, um, we're looking at tangibility. We, 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 we want to ask like, what, like I, I break things down to certain questions. I know this, some people are shocked by these questions, but it comes down to like, what are your views on black love? And what are your views on black economics? Yeah, or African Caribbean love, African Caribbean, you know, whatever, right? Uh, what are your views on it? Like, um, and they start doing the whole, you know, dancing around, like, like you potentially saw in that video just there. Then we understand that maybe this person, um, you know, needs to really go back and, and review uh, what what they're actually trying to improve. You know, what's their views on stuff? Um, I think, you know. This is this, this. I get down to a very simple, tangible thing, really. And that that is just down to that. You ask direct questions, and if if the, if if nothing has happened from a response, then you, you they're okay to be um, you know moved to someone else or some other situation. Like I understand our values are very important because what happens? A lot of people come to us at a certain point in the year when voting is on or where it might be, and th and then obviously you know the whole campaign comes out fireworks, good stuff, you know, pictures, fistons, good stuff. And then, you know, everyone, you know, when you're not usually including stuff, that's when people become very, very excited. But where I was asking, okay, wh what is the tangible? How do our people, African Caribbean people, benefit from this act, this law, this legislation, this campaign? How do we benefit? How do we go from being here to being up here? How? Break it down for us. If they can't, if they can't articulate that, then there's some will go somewhere else. You know, um, I, I, I'm for trying to keep as calm as possible because uh, the thing is, with with people of, of our background, we are subjugated to a whole lot of um, you know mistreatment. So uh, sometimes we get in the habit of getting really, really angry and really upset and stuff. And I say, there's no need to do that. Really, whenever you feel like you're being betrayed, just um, up the love you have for your own people. That's it. You, just up, you, just, you take the energy and you pull it, you know what I mean? And, and, and we quantify it as something that's tangible. Well, you've just described it, brother, with the campaign. That's tangible. You're, you're trying to get a result. You're trying to have people do actively things to actually, you know, see a result. So Absolutely. This is, this is, mm. And you, I think you've said it so articulately. We saw it with Kamala Harris when she was asked about reparations. What mm. is your position on reparations? And then they go into this black babble. Mm. Blah, 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 blah. It means mm. absolutely nothing. Mm. And they go on for eons. I'm humiliated in watching them. I don't know mm. how they're not humiliated mm. in just the responses. Because you get the thousand yard stare. Tony Blair was a genius at it. And the mm. minute that they go into that black babble, you know nothing in terms of policy and resources is coming mm. your way. Mm. These are the things that we have to develop the political sophistication to start understanding. Yeah. But mm. I think the thing that prefaces all of that is the fact that we have a policy of benign neglect yes. that is in place. And right. the minute the minute that you see a race and disparities report that says Britain is the model for race relations globally, mm. you know they are about to ignore every yes. single specific problem and challenge that we have yeah. so adpac's position is to create parity mm -hmm. we know that nothing given can be sustained mm -hmm. and we have recognized and assessed what happened in the states when ice cube created the the contract for black america yeah, which yeah. was a non-partisan contract for and on behalf of 40 million plus African Americans mm -hmm. to serve mm -hmm. exclusively their interests yes. with the government. Mm -hmm. Now, we saw a black media clearly betray African American mm -hmm. interests in saying, forget about Ice Cube because he's, bear with me, I'm getting a call and that is his usual. Important. Important person. Bear with me. So, 
we saw African American um, broadcasters clearly betray the interests of African Americans, and we're talking about tangible socioeconomic mm -hmm. benefits that were supposed to be derived from government. And they said, "Vote for the Democrats to vote Trump out." But everybody else at the table had a mandate for what they wanted. Mm. So what we saw was that England is only a couple of years behind the United States. And with Boris being elected right behind Trump, we mm. knew they were getting ready to duplicate exactly what they did. So ADPAC was also instrumental in setting up the political party, the We Matter Party, and working hand in hand so that the people actually understood that this is a party within our interests. And it's not about the big um, optics of prime minister or MP, because the power lies in local authority where the resources are. So knowing that we go for local seats where we're in boroughs and have large numbers within those particular constituencies, that one, we can get a candidate in, and two, we have the grassroots organizations on the ground that can actually be coordinated to work for and on behalf of the people. But then mm. more importantly, we have a councillor who can challenge institutional racism in order to create institutional inclusion, which is what leads me to the next video. Now, I saw this over the weekend and I was very, very upset because I think there is a, a great awareness that we do have African Caribbean political parties right now. So you have taken the Initiative Party, which is an African Caribbean lead party, and the We Matter Party. Now, we have never just worked and said, I'm only doing things for black people since we've been in the country, not in any position that we've been in. So it was with great dismay that mm. I saw David Lammy's response to the following question. I'll just quick one word answer. Would there be any value in creating a black party specifically for the UK? No. No. I know I now want to follow up. No. I mean I no no. <laughs> no, I'm not I, no because it, it, that's just, that would be as my mum would say damn stupidness. I mean, one because uh we have a first-past-the-post system that, in the end, is tough on the Greens and the Lib Dems, let alone uh, some newbie come along. Uh, look what happened when Chukaramuna... <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, OK. So, I, I mean... We'll... I would love to get your views on cool. um, where David Lemmy fits right. in the criteria of the two characters that you've described. Well... Before I say that, let me say this. One thing I do is I like to study patterns. And I see a consistent pattern when it comes to people of African diaspora talk about, um, you know, African um, interest-led uh, topics and, and working together. And what you start seeing, you start seeing it, it, it usually uh, like a pantomime starts coming forward, like a uh, big laughter. It's a joke. Make everyone laugh. Uh, you know, comical face, this kind of stuff. Or, 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 or saying, saying very strong stuff with, with a strong chest. I've seen it in many media, which, and it tends to happen as well when you tend to have two people from the same uh, continent, you know, talking about, you know, we need reparations or we need to, to, to reform the police, whatever it might be. And then you'll get someone from, you get another African or a Caribbean person to go against that. And the same kind of, you know, uh, pantomime thing comes out. I don't know what's in brother David Lammy's mind, if it's back of the mind, the back of the mind, uh, front of the mind, back of the mind, sorry. But um, that that is completely off code. Um, you know, everything starts from 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 a first step, and um, if we can't even uh, describe the people we're trying to benefit, like every other people group does, right? Then already we're kind of going backwards. So, unfortunately, just by his actions, I, I can't speak of the man's heart, but by his actions, he's, that is a liability actions at the moment. And I'm not, not to call the brother out directly, but. Um, uh, that's where the, I would place that, and obviously I would have to have a conversation with the brother to see where his mind and heart lays. But just from that clip and some other stuff I've seen, that kind of behavior is moving more towards liability, and you're not really an asset because you're not really telling us how to uh, get our resources to collect our information to make things actually work for us. And unfortunately, um, you know, if all the pan, and that, more important than anything, is pans. 
And one thing I do is I connect dots and make patterns, and that's part of the same pattern I see. So that's my answer. Absolutely. You know, from the intro, we saw a picture of Chaka with his party members for the change party. Mm. And it was clear that, number mm. one, David Lammy actually ignored the question and yeah. just sought to mislead us when he was talking about Chaka. Because mm. if we are a three million population and we are and we and we have at least three quarters of a million eligible voters, yeah. we can make swing shifts anywhere. And we mm. have a two million population in London. Yeah. He yeah. knows that mm. there is a benefit from keeping us dormant and yeah. collectively inadequate. Mm. This is why I love the term that you coined. And I think it's so significant because based on our lack of organization, we haven't realized any of the ins institutional structures that other ethnicities have realized because we've been too confused by the race game with yeah. the black when we're talking about being legal persons. Mm -hmm. Black is a political term that doesn't actually represent any ethnicity which is why mm. all ethnicities can usurp our resources and even self-elect to be us. So mm. based on those, those MPs' awareness, they're well aware. Mm. David Lammy is well aware, but plays the myth because it keeps him in a position. 21 years for an MP to hold a seat is a long time. Mm. But 21 years with no accomplishments for the African Caribbean community, one mm. of which you are, is astonishing. Yeah. Now, I'll just comment on this and then um, I'd like you to speak a little bit about your, the, the ideas and motivation behind your show. Mm. David Lammy was well aware of a case that I was involved with, with a community interest in his borough Haringey. Now, mm. I had had about seven people contact him or I had confirmation that he wasn't interested. This mm. is 399 Tottenham High Road, which is a community interest building. With Now, the trustees had been co-opted by a property developer to sell a community trust building. Now, when you become a trustee of a community trust building, your name goes on the deeds exactly the same as an owner. When you check land registry, you get the trustees. Now, if those trustees are working as a cabal and they have a conspiracy between them to sell the building, that building will get sold. So we contacted the Charities Commission, David Lammy. He wasn't interested. Nothing from the Charities Commission. They sold the building for $2 million pocketed the money mm. and the building is being turned into flats, which also falls in line with the racist policy of gentrification, which falls in line again with benign neglect. So they access certain monies for a deprived African Caribbean community, utilize the monies in our name, develop the area and then mm. gentrify the area where we're not included. Mm. So, I personally know of David Lammy's awareness of these issues and the fact from many of the Tottenham advocates in what he's not been involved in furthering, but has been highly effective in furthering for other ethnicities such as the local Tottenham um, Turkish community mm -hmm. and Yiddish communities. Mm. So... Mm. Tell us a little bit about your Friday night show, sir, and how we can get involved in the Black Betterment movement. Right. So, you know, unfortunately, um, many of us find ourselves at the very base bottom and we're very unaware of what goes on at the top. So uh, we can only expect it to a certain point. So what we try to do is we have a, a base starting pillar. Right. So the idea is to get everyone unified at a base level and we move up, we move up, um, you know, bit by bit, whatever. Right. So the the um, in regards to uh, Brother David Lammy, um, the truth is I don't necessarily, from a grassroots standpoint, I'm not too sure if his name really 
is I don't know if, if he's really a part of anything really that that, that I'm, a, I'm I'm around and um I, you know I I couldn't tell you right uh, but what I can tell you is um you know we're here from the grassroots and we're looking to people who who think alike so if you if you're in a, a position of power for many years and uh you know we're not really seeing much change then then that would be a, a, a poor uh, that's part of the collective inadequacy that we're trying to fix <laughs> all right and we're trying to form small groups of people such as yourself to come together we're going to be adequate we're going to work in an adequate way to get ourselves up 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 uh, and we're, we're hoping people jump on board because as we go up you know uh, benign neglect this ain't going to work because you're going to be left behind um when it comes to friday show the idea is is is, is to try to uh influence the influences get people to have the testimonies talk about ways of that people of african caribbean descent can come together can network on economics on self-esteem on health or whatever category it is the idea is to actually synchronize the mind of, of, of all people involved to try to um have templates in our lifestyle that make us look out for our own best interests unfortunately through the media, through you know, through word of mouth, through whatever it might be, many people from our background don't seem to uh, have an interest, whether it's at the front of my back of mind, to have something that work in our in our own interest, right? And that and and that might have even infiltrated, I suspect, the politicians, yeah, who uh, who I believe perhaps might represent us. So it's actually more profitable to actually undermine uh, African and Caribbean progress and actually work with it. Uh, and like you said, you, you will mention many people of African and Caribbean descent who undermine our progress, but other communities, they'll be, you know, and there's a science to it. Uh, one, we don't actually come together and actually uh, have a strong base to, uh, and obviously like, you know, putting our, our money resources into things we actually want to get done, okay? Right, but there has to be like a, a there has to be a structured pillar that we come to. So the the the, con the, the concept of black betterment is is a lifestyle. You see, it's uh, black people or African Caribbean people as it pertains to, to England, black British or however you define it, uh, looking out for our own interests. And it will be it's it's uh, by any means uh, each one teach one uh, um, uh, initiative, and all 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 manners of marketing campaigns, uh, feel goodisms, or whatever you want to do is going to be utilized. To actually achieve that goal, and my show, I am a I am an influencer influencer, right? So my show is showing that if someone such as myself can have a show, that means every single uh, brother and sister from the Caribbean can do the same and can actually uh, move in a way where, for example, you do things like you 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 form your own networks within your social media, where you where you are trying to uh, connect people economically. Whenever you want to buy certain things, you try to look for the African Caribbean community who are doing this kind of trade. Um, you make it you 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 put it at the back of the mind because of mercy I'm gonna give for many of these politicians. I'll give them mercy and say that I of mercy at the back of your mind, this is happening. Someone has programmed mm -hmm. something where you just do things that isn't in your best interest. So Black Berman is to program in the back of our mind with tangible steps, ways of looking out for our best interest. And that's that that and, and I'll do that and Brother and sisters, if you if you correlate with what I'm saying, you will have all my resources. I have spent many years learning many different crafts, many different crafts, and I network with other people who, who do many different crafts. I will utilize all our resources and expertise to work with you, in order to improve people of African Caribbean descent as they stand. It's a local initiative, but it's local and global. Because obviously, when we get this um, uh, standpoint, we'll be reaching out to other brothers and sisters from across the globe, whatever. So, as long as you correlate with that. You have my 100% back in anything you do, because that's my lifestyle, and I'm I'm going to do it. So it's everyone's lifestyle. That's my job. If you're if you're African Caribbean descent, my goal is to have you practice Black Berman as your lifestyle. That's excellent, um, and and this is why AdPac will definitely be following those that call to action to create the structured training, which is a Black Betterment program, because. If we don't have a value for our own currency, and we do have a currency, everybody mm. has a currency. Mm. It's just that our currency is incredibly low. Mm. The membership of ADPAC will have access to that course. We're now in the process of making all of our agreements to have these digitally deliverable training sessions that we haven't. There's a, there's, we have the ability to leapfrog areas mm. of development that political parties and other civic groups um, haven't realized. 
mm. because we've never been in these territories. So mm. we go right to the forefront of where we are technologically in 2021, mm. right to the forefront of where our progress has been made in terms of our thinking, in terms of our spirituality, in terms of amalgamating all of these things and the alchemy mm. that that involves to deliver in terms of digital training that we can automate. This is how we see ourselves becoming most effective in terms of not only upskilling our people, but creating what Rap Raven said is that subconscious thinking and the value for us. I watched a video recently of a Pan-Africanist and it was actually on the Pan-African Thought Center. Mm. And he was talking about a friend of his lady, wears a dashiki, donates to an African charity, does all of the things. And a young man came to mug her and steal her bag. Now, she also does martial arts mm. and is very active in Pilates and yoga. So she beat the guy and she was stamping on him. But during mm. that, she's called him a black basket. Now, mm. the police stood back and let her finish what she was doing, shook her hand and told her she did a good job. And that is when she realized even she had got into that fervent, violent reaction of despising her own. Mm. Now, visually and outwardly, you see a Pan-African, natural hair, head wrap, mm. the mm. shiki, but even she was drawn into it. So this is part of our reparations towards ourselves, which is mm. the spiritual and emotional healing not yes. the economic component. Mm. That is our distant cousin's role for mm. the Holocaust that they committed against us in a, in a war that hasn't stopped taking place. Because when a war stops, there are no more air bases in your homelands. There are no more military troops in your homelands. Germany lost a war in Europe. Germany mm. doesn't have troops in any European country. Germany is not allowed to make nuclear bombs. And Germany has no... Um, no interest to create incursions into any nation because they're aware that they lost. But that isn't mm. the case for Britain and that isn't the case for America, which mm. is why Africans globally, in terms of the African diaspora, realize the parity that we have amongst our peers mm. in being at the bottom of every measurable metric, which yes. is by design. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. ADPAC and Mount Melanin are well aware of this and we no longer pretend. We call a spade a spade, we articulate it, we look for those who are delivery partners to now further our interests. But mm. at an institutional level, mm. we start to work together behind the scenes. We start to build our operations. The problem we've collectively had is a lack of capital. And the closer we move towards the goals, now we know that our community is worth money because we saw Black Lives Matter raise 800000 UK pound sterling plus in four days. Mm. It's just that they were very well positioned and a lot of grassroots organizations weren't ready. And there's another thing that we have as African Caribbean people in that we are looked at in a very dim light when we ask for money. Yet we all need money, especially mm. for our civic operations. So Speak a little bit about, um, you did a great video on uh, Black Lives Matter in the States and not to go into too much detail and we're mm. not here to strip them down, no, but to um, analyze mm. where they've gone wrong right. and where they've gone right. Because we can clearly see what the successes are in raising right. awareness yes. of our um, of the inhumanity towards us. But then yes. again, you can clearly see where they dropped the ball and yes. went very left. So if you if you right. could give us your thoughts on that. So let me break things down. I think definitions are very important, very important. And um, I think, you know, we have to we have to understand, you know, how, how consistency works. And I always use the analogy of vegans. Right. So a vegan, uh, there is a there is a, a system of, of rules and codes that define a vegan. A vegan cannot eat any form of uh, flesh. 
that you can sh should not be wearing any kind of clothing that was derived from uh, the slaughtering of an animal uh, and, and, and and any animal byproduct, right? If you if you do that, you you can have a great conversation. Go, what if you actually prayed to the to the animal? What if you the animal was uh, was in his greatest joy before dying? And if you go, oh no, no, you're talking about another thing. That that's not veganism. And I think when it comes to like uh, any kind of black collective movements, you know, it's in the it's in the definition. If you say Black Lives Matter, then you have to have your, like your starting point. And uh, I I have to. Uh, I'm I'm very happy that the Black Lives Matter you know got got the the awareness of the public and they got funds and so forth. But I think direction is is the only criticism we can look at. And sometimes definitions come in there. So I've seen many ads where uh, it's different groups now getting involved. So I, I saw why I've got um, you know. Uh, where 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 it's it, it's now sexuality and 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 this other kinds of stuff and 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 illness and all this kind of stuff and I'm like, well, it, it really will start because of the injustice um, served by black men and black people by the state, right? Which is a very 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 you know very consistent thing, and I think in the and then I think when they went on their site they started talk and I think they put it down up they started talking about nuclear family and this kind of stuff and I don't know what that's got to do with. People, you know, black people being um, massacred by the uh, the state, uh, I, I, but you know, I, I haven't spoken to anyone, so they'll have to define themselves. But I think those definitions are very important. That's why I'm very, very clear. You know, uh, black people, and as it pertains to this country, the Afro Caribbean community, African Caribbean, working with the same like on solutions. That is the lifestyle of a black bearman. I'm a black bearer. If if I were to go and do something where black people are not included, that's something else. That's me playing a video game with my friends or having some kind of barbecue. So I don't know. But generally, definitions matter. Just like black lives matter, definitions matter. So I, I like to, to find out what a person's definition is. And that's why I always ask questions. And, and one of the questions that I find very valuable is, what are your views on black love and black economics? Right. This is just a starting point. And usually it gets me, it gets, if I start seeing the whole round, round the circle, but okay, it's, okay, cool. So this is what it is. So yeah, it, my only um, observations of Black Lives Matter would be, you know, that pillar that they stand on, making it a bit more clear. Uh, but any good work they do that, that, that gets justice for people of African descent uh, and, and highlights injustices, uh, they'll always have my support uh, on those areas, definitely. Um, I, I, think, I think that was very simply laid out. And ADPAC's position is we represent the interests of all African Caribbean people on the basis of them being African Caribbean. So mm -hmm. when we get into the, and Dr. Claude Anderson describes them as vertical issues and horizontal mm -hmm. issues, mm -hmm. we only deal with vertical issues. Economics, the tangibles that we will get across the board, mm -hmm. irrespective of our religion, our sexuality, mm -hmm. our uh -huh. height, our weight, or mm. any of these horizontal issues. Yes, yes. So the vertical issues, like when we saw the questioning of Kemi Badenoch, there is mm. no room for mm. Black Babylon. Mm. You now have to address us clearly, and mm. we'll just bring you straight back to the point, no, this is a vertical issue, because mm. we are now talking about reparations. We're yes. not talking about reparations for everybody any mm. more than the Jewish community is talking about reparations for everybody. We yes. are talking about the specific reparations for African specific. Caribbeans for yeah. the African Holocaust, mm. because you have to pay for the extraction of free labor, mm. then pain and suffering, torturing, mm. also underdeveloping Africa, as Walter Rodney's book perfectly laid out in how Europe underdeveloped Africa, yeah. which was only as a byproduct of being in that position based on the Holocaust. Mm. And then that continued where every time a leader rose up, um, they were assassinated by Europeans, be it Britain, be it the United States, France. be it the French, yeah. be it the Portuguese mm. or the Belgians. So yeah. when we understand that and we can put it in a clear chronological order, we're not going to get involved in the conflation. We have no. very clear, definable terms we know who we are, what mm. we're doing, who our delivery partners are, who our allies are, which is mm. equally as important. So yes. although non-Africans can't join ADPAC, we do have a division called Friends of ADPAC, and we will work with delivery partners who have a virtuous intent. However, well, yeah. that mm. doesn't 
influence the organization yeah. in any way and we're yeah. very clear about that yeah, let's be clear it's like one of the challenges we face as a collective group is uh, unfortunately many people of our background have been trained to be subservient and we've been trained to do things that's not in our collective best interest so we have to have certain guidelines we have to work to make sure we don't indirectly uh, fall for it because sometimes there's things in the back of our mind that are dictating actions that we are unaware it's through osmosis right so we have to have like a framework of how to operate. So how my framework is, is, you know, a black run, black led, black agenda. All right. And I was given analogies that, you know, if I'm trying to set up a, a media company and I've got so many boxes to tick, like, you know, if I make the story about an ancient black kingdom, then that means I know the actors are going to get, um, uh, they're going to, people from my background will be able to actually act because I'm, I come from the acting background and I'm aware you're always trying to get a token role, blah, blah, blah. Right. So you, when you own a company, you're going to try to change that. If you have like a mixed collective group and you have got your pillars defined in that, then everyone has an opinion. Some guy wants to make about Belgium history, someone wants to make Chinese history, and yeah. whoever you pick is going to economically affect people who, are, who allegedly started the collective for, you see? So I try to minimize that. But yes, when you get to a certain position of, of power and, and, and you can actually, you know, a certain level we can see stuff, then you're going to be networking, trading, exchanging on an equal level. Unfortunately, people from our background don't never seem to work with people on an equal level. And, and I'm trying to think of patterns and ways of, of, of existing where we can be on an equal level. And sometimes uh, consistency is key. So I hear that, brother. I hear, I hear what you're saying. And you said it. When you talk about an equal level, this is why I'm very deliberate with my language. I always talk about parity. So when mm. we work in parity, we work from a basis of having our own vehicle. So if you look at the um, Halston Bridge Park complex, that was acquired on behalf of the local African Caribbean community in Halston. Mm. The council were supposed to be custodians of the actual land just because the local community didn't set up the vehicle to hold a property. You'd have to have set up a trust. Now, they trusted the local authority to be the custodians of land and the property built because the GLC delivered the money to build that for the African Caribbean community. So mm. this is where I talk about our names being used. And that is why mm. I wanted to make the case of Black Lives Matter, because mm. you start off on one front, lots of rhetoric and articulation about black lives, black men, and then side issues come in, mm. horizontal issues. Mm. And then before you know it, you've got half women naked women dancing on a monument in washington mm. yeah. and we're being told that that is part of black empowerment yes. now how does the rest of the world view us mm. when we have a very low currency value yes. amongst ourselves and literally zero currency value mm. <laughs> amongst them and, and, and brother, let me just jump in. One, one, uh, by observing this, and I've seen this consistently throughout the years, that's why I think that if we can have a collective value system, everyone has to have their own value system, I understand this. But one I use as operations is the 4D value systems. And the 4D is discipline, dedication, dignity, and discernment. And if we can use this when, when we're trying to work with, within our community, that might actually benefit. So every action I do, I have to make sure, if it's for the community, is it discipline? Is it dedication? Is it dignity? Is it discernment? Am I putting this in everything I'm doing? Because... Hopefully, by doing this, we can minimize situations where, you know, where I've we got start to stop you, sir. Things. I want you to compartmentalize them. I want you to go through those four D's so mm. that we can understand them. Because yes. I think that it is a perfect starting place for anybody who is really now consciously wanting to take responsibility and apply these to our, not only our own personal lives, mm. but to our community betterment as well. So if yes. you can run through those four Ds right. and just break them down. So let's break it down. So let's go to the, the four D values. So the first one, let's say is discipline, right? This is a very important one. Uh, sometimes we're going to be operating in a collective group doing certain stuff. And we're going to we're going to have some old habits that might come forward. But we're going to have a conversation and say, OK, these old habits, do them in your spare time at home. But when you're working here in front of the TV or, or doing something, because these things can be used against you and they can be used to um, undermine your progress, let's practice discipline and not do that. You know, there's certain kind of vices and things we might want to do. Let's practice discipline when we're, when we're showing up doing stuff because we understand that th these collective things can be used as a marketing campaign to undermine progress. Very important. So that's discipline, right? Dedication. 
sometimes you know someone dies unfortunately and then you know everyone jumps on you know let's do something let's do something and then you know after five weeks is gone dedication is actually consistently doing certain things um it might be a lifelong uh, commitment I, I know that might scare people but you're dedicated it, you know you're dedicated it, it's consistency right this dedication to do certain thing dignity and this correlates with what you just said there with the lady dancing around around martin luther king's um statue we want to be dignified in the things we're doing yeah this this this, this the quality of being worthy of honor and respect so if, if if we can't respect ourselves like we can't expect our quote-unquote opponents to respect us as well so let's try to turn up dignified in in every kind of way we can yeah and this is this is very necessary and, and these things they can spread to so many different examples and finally and the most i would say the most important but it's, it's it is important it's discernment and the reason why discernment is important is because people are going to come along and they're going to they're going to come along and they say i represent you know your same agenda right and you need to be able to look at information and discern between okay that works kind of like bruce lee's philosophy of come through mm -hmm. or, um you know jet Kondo, i think it was where you know you take what works you describe what doesn't right you know unfortunately black people and african caribbean people are, are, are collectively inadequate so sometimes there's some really great people but they have some kind of like challenges, you know, in their lifestyle. So you need to be able to take what's good and disregard what doesn't work. And also understand that, that, you know, that you're going to see some things like, for example, we mentioned Black Lives Matter, which we recommend and we say, well done for this. But there's certain behaviors that don't necessarily correlate with consistency in, in some of our lifestyles. So we, we practice some of saying, well done for that. But on this one, you know, we 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 practice the right to have a disagreement, and we'll go our separate way on that one. So this is the the, the four D values that if we can uphold, I suspect should uh, contribute to betterment within uh, you know the community. Excellent, and this is why the code show is about agreeing, adopting, and applying. Mm. The applying part is the hardest for us because you said it. It is sticking to that program. We look. We are just represent, representative of all other human beings. Mm. And it is very hard when you are taking a new action to implement into your life. It's exciting in the beginning. You become tired. But the minute you take a week off, it's a mm. wrap. Mm. You might not return in. The, it, 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 this applies to diets. It applies yes. to work. It applies to setting things up. Major. You get to that point. You allow yourself respite and we don't do it again. Mm. And this is why we talk about lifestyle. Mm. Just to be able to adopt in those incremental steps, just like a tortoise, every day, very slowly, in the same direction, never taking off more than you can, biting off more than you can chew, mm. but being consistent. Because what we get is that euphoria of new information. You want to tell the world, and it becomes a push campaign. Mm. But when you're pushing information on people or anybody's pushing information on you, how attractive is that to receive? Mm. This is why everything we do, get involved, don't get involved, because it resonates or it doesn't resonate. It's very much a pull campaign that we deal with. I personally am no converter of man nor woman. Mm. I have no interest. It's too much hard work. Mm. And even those who are highly passionate get dejected after a while. Mm. So we're coming to the top of the hour. Rap Raven, tell us where we can find you on all of your socials, sir. Right. So if, oh, I've been on social media for a very long time. Uh, since, uh, for those who know, I, I'm in the media. I design apps and um, graphic design, this kind of stuff, right? So I'm really into it. But um, Rap Raven at you know, Instagram, Facebook, or uh, um uh, YouTube, you'll find me. And YouTube every Friday is at 10 o'clock. If you um, you follow, I, I do the Black Bearman Show. Everyone's welcome to come in. Um, you can pick a topic. I, every week I talk about, I talk about a new topic. Uh, guests are welcome to come on to be to discuss certain things. And you can also pick topics you wish for us to, to discuss. It's about uh, Black Bearman. So uh, anything that's constructive or anything that can we can do to improve our current condition is always an option. And um, like with Bro Brother Dean Okai here, um, you know, we look forward to always networking with other brothers who are consistent and, and, and you know, they have a history of, of, of Batman. And, um, yeah, this, this is why I'm always here. And, and like I said, I'm, I'm a tool for, for the people to use. So any skill I have is a skill you guys have. And hopefully I can uphold discipline, dedication, and discernment as I move through uh, the world. 
So I want to thank you for joining us today and tune in 10 o'clock Friday night, Rap Raven YouTube. Thank you, brother. Thank you, family. So what do we take away from the code show today? That we must clearly define what we're doing, that we must first clearly define who we are so that we can't be infiltrated as a community to overcome being collectively inadequate is very important that we develop the same structures that all other communities have to serve their interests. But that starts with how we actually conduct ourselves and whether this becomes part of a lifestyle or whether it remains to be uh, something in our lives that is a novelty. So this was the code show we bring you here to agree, adopt, and apply with everything that resonates to you. Find out more on our website, adpac.net, and look out for further shows here on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube.